Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fin Factor. I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. This is episode number 173. Aaron, we have a trade to announce. We do. Um, my goodness, there was a whole lot going on. Someone I think it was on Twitter had said uh, this might be the largest trade in NHL history with regard to the amount of assets that are moving back and forth. I think it said 13 separate pieces going from uh, one place to another back and forth. Uh, obviously not the biggest in NHL history in terms of um, uh, weight, if you will. I think Gretzky might hold that one too, among other records, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, this was a whole ton of assets going all over the place. I think we have a graphic for this, Aaron, if you want to go ahead and just kick us off with that. Sure, I'll read this for the uh, podcast if, as if they don't know by now. Um, the Sharks are getting a 2023 first round selection, conditional 24 first round selection. Oh, I'm going to butcher these. Uh, Shakir Mukamadulin, uh, Fabian, Fe yeah, Fabian Zetterland, Nikita Ahoykchuk, Andreas Johnson, and a 24 seventh round selection, which I'm sure Joe will just beg to get. Um, New Jersey is getting Timo Meyer, Scott Harrington, Senteri Hataka, Timur Ibrigimov, Zach Amon, and Colorado's 20, 24 fifth round selection. So a lot of pieces going back and forth here. Uh, New Jersey getting a lot more player. Well, are they getting more players? Yeah, I guess they get one more. Um, so the Sharks are shedding salary. Oh, I'm sorry. They did retain some salary as well. Correct um yeah they retain 50 percent yep so three million dollars is staying with the sharks however that contract is up at the end of this season so that won't be carrying forward who cares whatever yeah. i'm sure that helps squeeze another first round pick out of uh new jersey and i'm totally fine with that yeah sure i mean obviously we're not we're not um trying to add any pieces here at the uh the deadline so uh we can retain a little bit of salary and it's not a big deal uh, three million dollars. Who cares if it helps the deal go through and that's the deal that they wanted to make? Uh, so be it. So, um, Aaron, I think uh, uh, the general feeling on at least Sharks Twitter hockey, if you will, um, they're underwhelmed, I guess is the right word to use <laughs> this uh, for this trade here. Um, I don't know. Do you think that the return is close to maybe what you had imagined uh, the Sharks would get for Timo Meyer? Uh, no, I, I know exactly what people are pissed about. I think they wanted one of two players, right? Dawson Mercer or uh, who was the other one? Holtz. Blanking on his, was it? Holtz. Holtz. And Holtz is uh, he's the Swedish one, right? That played with with um, Eklund um, for Team Sweden. So I, I think everyone was kind of this is the problem when there's so many mock trades that have been going back and forth and back and forth for the past week or so people are going to get upset. And this is exactly what happened. Am I upset? They didn't get them. Sure. Uh, but I think the main piece here is the sharks are trying to build out and we'll have a clip here later, but um, Mike Greer wants to rebuild the blue line and get some depth in there. So having Shakir, oh, I'm going to have to really practice this name. Mook Madulin. Mook Madulin coming in uh he won't be playing right away because he's on loan right now to the khl so we won't see him this season but possibly in camp next year and he's been improving he's a six foot four ginormous defenseman that can skate that is extremely rare to see um so he can move his feet he has a pretty hard shot so we're probably gonna see some big bombs coming from the power play or the second power play and um excited and Greer's very excited and he said he's going to be a mainstay in the top four defensemen for years to come for the Sharks so get ready to see a giant defenseman which we haven't seen really on the Sharks in a long long time everyone seems to be getting smaller these days um but uh that I think was one of the main pieces coming back for the Sharks other than the first round picks obviously yeah it seems like the main pick uh, again as you said other than the the first um uh, the their Dauber prospects that you, you sent a link uh, and, and what they're saying about him is that he's, as you said, tall, mobile, two-way defenseman. He closes the gap quickly and effectively and can skate his way out of offensive pressure with fluidity and purpose. Um, top two uh, defensive upside, but more likely a fourth or fifth defenseman. So that means on the Sharks, he'll probably be playing with Eric Carlson. There you go. Uh, the, the problem, of course, playing with Eric Carlson is you start looking real good and you get traded. Um, Scott, oh my goodness, I cannot believe... 
um, some of the guys that are are in this trade, honestly, Aaron, like it just seems, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a hard time with the uh, Santeri Hata, uh, Hataka. Mm-hmm. I liked him. I really liked him. I, I don't see why they had to unload him, but I mean, I guess if, if they liked him as well, that's part of it. Okay, great. And then Scott Harrington, a guy that's got any, uh, some NHL experience, not anybody we had to, to go out and pay anything for, really. You just kind of like signed him up and then, okay, make him make a trade and you get some assets back for him. Hey, that's a big win in my book, sure. But gosh, I feel like these are guys that are not very expensive that have some NHL experience that you could have just plugged in next season and not have to go through all this. So I, they must have been a, a bigger part of the trade than, you know, people are letting on. But, um, you know, other guys, uh, Ibrahimov, not concerned. Uh, Emond, we were excited when Emond first came on board, but honestly, it's been years and nothing's really happened. So, okay, no big deal. Again, guys are maybe just thrown in there to kind of uh, get the some of the cap space and get some of the contracts uh, done and out of the way so that they can, Pull all these guys that they're uh, they're the sharks were looking for uh, across from New Jersey. So probably just to facilitate the trade, I get it. But um, gosh, it's just there's a couple guys there that I was kind of hoping we'd hang on to for seasons to come. Now, if they had unloaded Kanijov, I'd be <laughs> dead. But uh, you look like you had something you wanted to say there. Go ahead, fire. Yeah, you. I was gonna say you just you nailed on the head. New Jersey wants these guys because they're cheap and they're NHL ready defensemen. And they're pretty much now on a good team. We're going to be their sixth, seventh defenseman. New Jersey is going to be building right now. They're building to go in a very deep run in the playoffs, win a Stanley cup. And what you need is depth. Any of those guys get injured in front of them. You're going to have both of those guys able to step in and at least play bottom pairing minutes at minimum. So um, I could see why they're very attractive for New Jersey to take on. Plus, uh, obviously, they fit under the cap, so that's going to help. Um, I think going uh, Ibrahimov and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but Amon, those might have been just uh, to work out contracts, like the amount of contracts on the books, just kind of throwing them in there to make it work. So um, maybe there was some interest in there. Maybe they, I mean, Amon maybe at this point just needs a change of scenery um, to kind of get his career on track and make it to the NHL at some point. So they might have seen something in him, but. Yeah, um, I'm excited for. I'm just gonna call him Shakir. <laughs> That's his first name. <laughs> um, Zetterland, Zetterland, and Johnson. I think are gonna slot into the lineup uh, as soon as they're in town. I don't know when that will be. Um, I think those guys are are again high energy, big hitting, semi scoring touch, uh, hard workers. Exactly the kind of players that Mike Greer wants in his organization. So. We are slowly seeing more and more Mike Greer putting his hands on the organization depth and changing things around here. Um, so I'm excited to see what those guys can do. I'm not expecting much. They're not going to be a top six guy. But now that the Sharks don't really, they just lost their best top six guy, um, there's going to be a spot open for somebody. Guys, uh, we appreciate you jumping in the chat. I mean, the chat's actually going crazy. We should probably take a look and see if we can answer <laughs> some of those. Uh, why don't you flip through that while I let people know, hey, guys, the best way to support the show, honestly, uh, the like, subscribe is awesome and great. We do appreciate that. But the best way, honestly, is if you hit us with that share, you hit us with that retweet. If you guys are enjoying the show, let your Sharks friends and family know about us as well. Get them in the chat so they can start chatting with us as well. Uh, have a nice conversation going back and forth. Uh, definitely fun. It's one of the reasons I love doing the live shows. So there you go um aaron is there anything in the chat before we kind of start talking about uh, another guy here that you wanted to pull out uh well any man just said one key note sharks reduce total pro contracts from 49 to 48 out of 50 which gives them slightly more room this week for more asset movement if anything materializes absolutely i still don't think the sharks are done the trade deadline for, as a reminder is this upcoming friday i think it's afternoon at 12 p.m our time on pacific um that just means everything has to be submitted to the league so you sometimes see trades come in and announced a little bit after the deadline but that's only because the paperwork was in but the league has to look to make sure everything's you know correct and and um not like uh, who was it last year who traded was it anaheim and vegas remember vegas tried to trade a player that had a no trade list and they never cleared it with them they have to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen again which that dad nov or did has Dadanov. Dadanov, not yeah. Dadanov, it's Dadanov. Yeah, he went to Anaheim and they went right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three days later. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they have to make sure everything's compliant and ready to go. So um, this Friday, we'll see. I, I still don't think they're done. 
Um, a lot of people were speculating when this trade was slowly leaking out of who that was involved that <laughs> LeBanc and Gregor were involved. Um, but obviously that's not the case. They're still here for now. I, I was I was speculating. <laughs> speculating about Gregor, right? No. Yes. No, but honestly, I thought uh, LeBanc would have made a whole lot of sense for the Sharks, get that $4 million off the books. Again, not like they need it, but, um, you know, as someone else had alluded to, uh, where, where there's contract space, yes, but then adding even more cap space, taking on a bad contract, because, uh, you know, this isn't the end of the trade deadline, obviously, right? We still got some time here. So uh, being able to take on another bad contract where uh, maybe there's a little bit more money than the player really ought to be, get paid, uh, we could have taken that on. Um, but Without moving LeBanc, that $4 million stays in the books, no big deal, really. But, uh, you know, again, just would have gave a little bit more uh, wiggle room to do something other uh, with what we've got here. So, Andreas Janssen, I think someone had said it's actually phonetically Janssen, not Johnson. Oh. So, thank you for that. And Actually, I'm going to call that name out. Who was it that said that? Uh, Nicholas Egan. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, yeah, so Andreas Janssen. Now, Aaron, this is this is the one you were saying he, he was kind of buried uh, in the AHL, is that correct? Uh, yeah, he had a, a contract of two point two million dollars, and he was right now. Um, you had said that the Sharks felt like this guy was actually an NHL player. Is just kind of uh, he was playing behind some guys that he just couldn't get past. That's what Greer said. Greer said in his okay. in his um, press conference that he had earlier today that um, he's kind of a victim of the salary cap situation and had to get buried in a way. So it was kind of unfortunate that he signed a contract i mean imagine kevin lebank right 4.75 and the sharks actually sent him down the ahl um to bury his contract that's kind of the situation that he was in so um he thinks that he is greer thinks that he's an nhl caliber player and will most likely be slotting in the lineup right away um so you know he's going to show up very very hungry to show off what he can do um, so I would fully expect some very high energy and good games coming from him for the, at least the first couple of weeks here. Um, so it's exciting to see, you know, shiny new toys and what they can do. You know, they're not going to be a team of my replacement, but um, definitely changing the culture and the way the team grinds out wins if they can. And, and um, it's going to be a very different defensive minded team, I think, coming in the next year or two. Yeah, seems like that might be the case. Uh, the other one here that's interesting again is uh, Zetterland. I think I'm I think I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. uh, Zetterland. Now, the the thing that I noticed right away with him, and uh, I think we've got Graham Slam in the chat. Uh, yeah, there he is. So, hey, Graham, I'd love to hear uh, if you've got any special takes on any of these guys. We probably should have asked to have him on the show today. That would have been fun. Uh, but he, the first thing I noticed about him was right-handed shot and that's something that the sharks have not had a whole lot of uh in recent recent seasons here obviously guys like eric carlson with a right-handed shot that's nice but uh really kevin lebank is the only kind of um offensive threat if you will that kind of stands out to me with the right-handed shot so being able to get this guy and see maybe what he could do uh as he develops over time uh that one uh might be an interesting watch aaron do you know anything about uh zetterland or should we just wait to see what grand slam comes back with <laughs> uh, i can see what he says but just reading the the dauber profile here it says um uh he's a quick offensive winger and impressed uh his shot remains his greatest weapon which means he will be a trend with the devil's wingers this is before he was traded um he added some playmaking and defensive elements to his game during his time in the minors so he seems to be a lot more responsible than probably when he first started. Um, and they were expecting him to fully make the roster this uh, this fall. And he will become a fan favorite for his tenacious, high energy style of play. Um, so there you go. Andy Mann just said Johnson yeah. in 21, 22 in New Jersey he had 71 games. He had 13 goals, 22 assists for 35 points in a minus four uh, in a 14 minutes a night. Sorry. Seems like he's a guy that can compete at NHL level at the bottom six at minimum. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to see is maybe because the Sharks, depending on if more piece, pieces get traded out here like Bonino or something, he might slip into the top six. But um, I would expect him to be maybe on that third line or so, maybe fourth line. Pretty lanky, six foot four, 190 pounds. He was drafted uh, yeah. 20th overall in 2020. Wait, who are you talking about? Zetterland? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Mookum Dillon. Uh, Zetterland? Uh, yeah, no, I'm looking at Mookum Dillon. My bad. Uh, yeah, Zetterland. Um, I, again, I, I, interesting. I, I'll, be, I'll be interested to see uh, where he goes uh, in, in this lineup uh, in, in, you know, years to come. So um, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing where, what he does. Uh, I, I don't know, though. Uh, when it comes to kind of the overall feeling of all of the assets going in and coming out, um, some of them kind of cancel out for me, and I just don't know that any of this really adds up to what anyone obviously was thinking of for Timo. Now, of course, we all wanted to have, you know, the big shiny names. And I know you alluded to that earlier, but um, I just don't know, Aaron. I don't know if this is now some people were, were comparing this and you thought this was unfair, but they were comparing this to the trade with uh, what was it Nashville today. Uh, yeah. Nashville yeah. And so um, Tanner, you know, I, I don't know if I'm selling, saying the name correctly or not, but um, they got a uh, quite the ransom uh for this guy so can you address that people who are saying well gosh look what nashville did versus what the sharks got and then team was a much better player etc cetera, etc cetera. can you kind of address uh some of those concerns <laughs> i to me i just don't think it's fair to compare those two trades because it's two completely different gms working the phones and, and working a deal out um people should be more upset or tampa bay fans should be more upset about how Tampa just way overpaid for a guy. And it's kind of weird to me that they would send, they basically sent five draft picks for a player plus traded a player, probably just to balance out the rosters. But um, they sent a 23 third, fourth and fifth round pick a 24 second round pick and a 25 first round pick a conditional. If it's not top 10 protected, you know, all that stuff that everyone does nowadays, ever since Carlson got traded. Um, I think, um, I, <laughs> Third, fourth, fifth round, eh, whatever. The second round and the first round are kind of the more important ones here, and they're one and two years respectively away. So I still think the Sharks did better. Like, I just think, obviously, we didn't get a, their top their top three prospects that people wanted. Uh, was it Holtz, Mercer, and um, I keep blinging on the other one. I keep seeing it in the chat, too. Um, but, yeah, like... Uh, I, <laughs> whatever people people got too worked up on what they were expecting so yeah yeah and graham just said tampa keeps overpaying for guys though and they keep winning cups so they're on to something right so those picks don't really matter as much because they're so late if tampa's going to keep winning if yeah. they're getting into the last final four of the teams there it's that's a at best a 28th overall pick yeah, Noah Claxton saying, after thinking about the trade a lot more, I see why the Sharks went for Shakir and defensive prospects. We're getting a top five pick, and this class is stacked at center and forward depth. So, exactly. yeah, I mean, any of those guys, let's say even in the 20s, if there's uh, if it's a pretty stacked draft, you're still going to get a pretty solid prospect uh, with the first that you've acquired through these trades. So, um yeah, no, I know. I can see what you're saying, and and I get it. I guess just seeing the return, it just feels underwhelming. I don't know. <laughs> people are expecting the big old splash. Nemec, thank you. Or Nemec is Nem the other Nem one that yeah, people yeah, are yeah. There you go. wanting. Um, thank you, the five people that told me in the chat. Um, <laughs> I uh, It sucks. You're right. I wish we would have had. It would feel better that you're getting rid of Timo, and you're getting somebody who's at least going to almost not quite a guarantee, but pretty right. close to a guarantee of somebody who's going to be stepping in at some point in a couple of years, if not, definitely not right away, but soon, you know? So I don't know. I think it's okay. I just want to I, call out two wheels down here. It says the trade was pretty fair. In my opinion, go sends go <laughs> <laughs> talking about the Carlson trade. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Carlson, uh, you know what? Uh, hey, man, I got to say, uh, we certainly do love our uh, non-Sharks uh, subscribers. Th those guys are pretty cool coming in and, and chatting <laughs> with us. I remember with the um, the, the Vegas uh, playoff series and we had the guy from Vegas in here. We've had Blues fans in here. We've had, obviously, that Ottawa Senators fan. And uh, yeah, it was just it's just really cool. So he also uh, replies with, uh, bro, you got two first rounders. Yeah, we, we, we did. That's still it's two first rounders but they're gonna be pretty late man i don't know I, I mean i get it what you don't think they will be uh it's up in the air for this season i think they won't i mean i don't know that you don't know what can happen the east coast is very very tough right now yeah they're they're up there but 
We'll see. I mean, they have the Rangers on their heels. Five Kellen, points behind them. Kellen jumping in says, I said it before. I can only see the trees from behind the eyes of fury. I currently have. I hope to see the forest in 25, 26. <laughs> oh, excellent comment. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> we, uh, we do have a, um, let's, let's run this clip of, of Mike Greer. This is, uh, oh, what? But before Jug666, I just haven't seen this name before, but Jug666, I do want to call this comment too. He says, ah, the chat's scrolling too fast. Uh, the Russian D-man is going to be a stud, a stud, he says. Okay. So we're going to hold you to that, Jug. Okay, Aaron, sorry. Go right ahead, bud. Uh, okay, I'm going to set this this clip up. This is Mike Greer. He's kind of going over the whole process of the trade. The question is more or less like, uh, can you run through the whole trade scenario? How long does it take to, to build this up? And um, here we go. Here's what Mike Greer had to say about it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been going on for quite a while, um, to be honest, and um, some back and forth. And, you know, I just think that's that's kind of the way things go this time of year. Um, you know, he's he's been interested in him for a while and let me and kind of let us know that. And um, so we've had talks going on for a bit and I think things kind of started to pick up more and more as guys got taken off the market um, and things that way. But it's kind of. It's just kind of we've just kind of been working, working at it for and hammering away at it. And, you know, you know, I got to give thanks to Tom. You know, he was, you know, I know it's not a it wasn't an easy, easy deal on either side. But, you know, he was he was good to work with and and uh, we just kind of pushed it through. But it was kind of, you know, a lot of a lot of back and forth over the last, especially over the last probably 10 days or so. There you go. There's there's the whole process of uh, how this trade worked out because it was a lot of pieces to be worked out and moved around here. So uh, I kind of wonder though, Aaron. Um, he mentioned guys coming off the market and it helped kind of heat up the trade talks, right? Yeah. Does that help or hurt the sharks? Uh, help. It, it, it helps them. You think? I think it helps them because um, nobody wants to be the first one. They're going to try and you know someone's going to be pulling the trigger to try and get who they want or who they think is the better option. Um, but then teams get desperate. So New Jersey was like, oh, man, it's basically either Kane or Meyer. Meyer at least is younger. Kane's just as good, but a, a different kind of player. But um, I think it was a little bit harder to get. And Meyer, you had somewhat control since he's going to be an RFA. Now, New Jersey did not negotiate a contract with him. Um, that might have hurt. In fact, that question was asked of uh, of Greer if that, like, maybe diminish the return slightly. And and he even said like maybe a little, but that wasn't a big, huge factor for them. So um, you just have a little bit more control of Meyer. Now Timo's a, a power forward and he's, was he 26 years old, 28 years old? I always forget how old he is. Um, 26. There's, there's a thing on, on um, Twitter I saw and it was basically, he's a power forward and all these power forwards kind of teeter off about 28, 29. So how many years left of Timo being dominant Timo that we see are left for him? Milan Lucic is probably a great example of this guy was at top of the league and then he just fell from grace big time because it's, it's taxing on their body. The way that they play is just devastating. So um, I'm not saying Timo is not going to be good, but I just don't his career year of last year and possibly even this year, depending on how he finishes the season. Um I don't expect that to be the team that's going to be going forward for eight years, which is probably a contract he's going to be signing is eight more years. So good for the Sharks to not sign yet another eight year contract, getting something from that. And um, I'm excited about that defensive prospect, because, again, like they just said in the chat, there's going to be a top five, hopefully top five um, offensive stud that's going to be added into the Sharks um, lineup this year and who knows who else comes out of this draft and who knows how many other possibly picks that we can get or even trade up. Maybe we trade that New Jersey trade or the trade the New Jersey drafts pick up with another draft pick to get like 15th overall or something um, in this draft. So uh, there's stuff that that could still happen here. Yeah, it looks like um, in the chat here, we've got some some people wanting to clarify that the conditional is not a first round pick unless the conditions are met. It's actually a second. Um, 
which I mean, for me, just kind of makes it even worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and the conditions again, Aaron, they have to make the conference finals in either 2023 or 2024. And Timo has to play. I know the number 50 is either 50% or 50 games. I can't 50% remember which one it of is. The games. 50% of games. Okay. Yep. So 41. Um, so if he does that and they do that, uh, then that second becomes a first. That's my understanding. Right. Yeah. It okay. says if New Jersey makes the 23 Eastern Conference finals and he plays in 50% of the games um, and they make the 20. Or they make the 24 Eastern Conference final. The pick becomes New Jersey's 24. So it's interesting. If Meyer doesn't sign and he's gone, he's not even on New Jersey next year, and New Jersey makes the 24 Eastern Conference final, because it says or. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that be odd that it just jumps to a Oh, first. 50% of the playoff games, they're saying. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. 50% of the playoff games, because... He can't play 50% of the, what's left of this season to have it count. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it's really not complicated at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at, at all. all. Hey, man, chat's got it figured out, though. <laughs> you know, and that's that's part of the reason I love doing the lives, man. The chat comes in there. They Because, uh, well, you know, we're, we're just fans just like you guys. We're not insiders or anything either. You know, we're seeing this information and we're just kind of just want to chat with you guys really what it comes down to so we just stunk <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, why did we give him the power that he has i don't know anyway uh yeah thank you so much <laughs> i saw that thank you so much for uh the correction there chad appreciate you guys you guys are on point i love it uh zinxy it says eckland uh zinxy you're gonna need to give us a little more uh context uh, are you excited that Eklund's going to get a chance to play with uh, one of these guys by chance? Or uh, what do you mean by that comment there? So go ahead and let us know. But Aaron, there was a question that I had and a question that actually got pulled up in the chat. And I will give uh, some credit to the person that asked it, though I was going to ask you anyway. Uh, yeah. Do you think it would have been better to wait until the season ended to trade Meyer? Alex New 25. I'm butchering that name, just like the rest of the guys that we uh, we, we <laughs> traded for. Um, so that was that was my question to you: was could the Sharks have done better if they waited until the draft? I don't think so for Timo, um, only because it would be very dependent on his contract situation. Um, I, I think uh, they would have gotten more at this deadline because I feel like GMs are a little bit more desperate than they are at the draft or or in the off season or whenever. So. Um, I think because of his contract situation of being an RFA, it's more important to get him to play. I mean, think about it this way. New Jersey didn't have to negotiate a contract with them right now. They can have him play and he's going to have a great time. It's a winning atmosphere versus being on the sharks. You think he's going to want to stay if he has a pretty good year or pretty good oh, playoff, yeah. pretty good bet that he's going to want to sign there if he can, if they can make it work. So I think it was smart of them to not negotiate a contract but um it is important that i think that piece being there being that they would still control his rights because new jersey could be like we're not going to sign you and we'll trade your rights away to a team that does want to sign you so you can negotiate before the deadline comes up um i think that still has somewhat of a value and and that's part of the return that came back to the sharks and in, in getting i'll say not two first but a first and a conditional second round pick <laughs> for next year um so yeah, I I don't think he would have gotten more value. What do you think? Let's let's get a roll call right after I get Zinxie's comment here. No idea. I just set Eklund to hype up the kid. <laughs> 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 well done, Zinxie. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's do a roll call here, Aaron. Let's say where are you guys watching from, and then I mean, quite simply, and I know it's going to be negative, but it's okay. <laughs> just throw your 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 ideas in there. What are your thoughts? on the trade um if you can pull positives from the trade please do because obviously it's very easy to say gosh we didn't get grade a prospect you know guy here or there and um i think most people are kind of looking at that at it that way but um if there's a positive to pull out of this who are you looking forward to seeing them develop um are you excited that the first that the one that actually is a first <laughs> is going to be a, a pretty solid player um, for the Sharks to pick up in a very deep draft. I think that's kind of the saving grace for me, Aaron, 
is that it is going to be such a deep draft that even a later round pick is still going to be a pretty fantastic player. Hopefully. I mean, hopefully the Sharks don't reach on somebody, but they do have... It's very interesting. I'm I'm very curious to see how they do this draft because they hired somebody who just does the first and second rounds. So stockpiling more first round, more second round picks, um, they're making him, you know, work and and dig and find those um, good values. And so this is going to be a very different draft than what we had last season with Doug Wilson and Doug Wilson Jr. at the helm of of making the picks. Um, I think uh, Doug Wilson Jr. kind of reached last year in that first round and people were kind of pinning Greer on it, but Greer has to trust his, what he had in there. Right. Um, oh, here. You yeah. Read, read this one? comment. Cause this, this guy looks like he's from New Jersey here. Sure. Rick Roma devil's fan here. I like Shakir, but the fact that we have Nemec Hughes and Casey softens the blow of losing him. Zetterlin is a nice player, but he's not getting Holtz, but not getting Holtz is surprising to me. I don't think you're alone in that. I think New Jersey is going to be very happy with this trade. I think. Yeah, because they didn't lose any major pieces going out major, not major pieces, but major uh, prospects right. going out, which, by the way, uh, Rick, thank you so much for tuning in. It's, it's I mean, obviously, we're a, a Sharks themed show, right? <laughs> but uh, we do appreciate all the folks coming in uh, from different teams, jumping into the chat. And uh, I mean, just just being a good person in chat and talking nicely with everybody else. Thank you so much for that. So um thank you for your comment do you appreciate the other perspective the other side of things so uh new jersey says as a devil's fan i like it lol but honestly zetterlin is going to do well for you guys i think thank you jeremy appreciate that comment we're getting some uh some devil's fans in here uh graham slam says even devil's fans are surprised by how little they had to give up <laughs> yeah i think everybody kind of felt that way about this but i mean um, I, I don't know we'll see we'll see maybe it pans out but you know what aaron here's the thing and i'll say this as long as we have devil's fans in the chat here and um Timo did so well this season, right? But let's look at just even the last two seasons prior. We, we put the Timo time clock down a bunch of times, right? <laughs> it's not Timo time. He's right. had some bad seasons. Contract year, has a great season. Gets himself a trade out of San Jose. Man, good for you. And he's going to go to a team that is going to be able to utilize his talents properly. He's going to be playing with fellow countrymen there. Um, everything points to this is a great acquisition for new jersey however in the last three seasons he's really only had one that was star studded yeah i, I mean i don't know what kind of team is going to be there and again like i said earlier the the style of his play just going to wear down his body quicker than than other ones but that's just the nature of of power forwards in the nhl um i don't i i it's still going to reserve judgment for this only because when the sharks of this off season, Greer signed a bunch of UFAs that most of them I did not know much of. Um, we had Nico Sturm come in. I was like, who is this guy? And why do we sign him for three years? Now I know why we signed him for three years. Right. Steve the rents, another guy, another two year. Um, they went after AC Mont after uh, he was put on waivers. Uh, they got Matt Benning, which everyone was clowning on. They got um, who who went in the trade again? Um, what didn't they sign? Who was it? Was it Harrington? They signed as a free agent. Yeah. Right. So these I was shocked at all of these signings. And yet there there's value there. There's yeah. there's it's a different it's definitely a different team. I think a lot of Sharks fans, obviously, they're used to winning. Um, it's been a while since we've won, but you're used to seeing pavelski getting picked in the seventh round and becoming a future hall of fame player that's just never going to happen again if it does happen then shame on now 32 different gms for missing that player in the draft um i i, I don't know I, I just i think they're used to having an offensive team when you had jumbo and marlo couture pavelski uh burns all these guys it was a high octane offense not sustainable in the cap league once they get older. So the sharks had to rebuild and they're, they're completely going in a different direction now. So I think um, the sharks are what Greer wants is hardworking players. We're not going to see any more Kevin LeBanks that just have controller disconnect. They're going to be, everyone's going to be busting their butt on every single shift from here on out. So I think um, it's just a different era in sharks hockey and people aren't ready or used to it yet. 
We just stunk. <laughs> Obviously, they're not winning now either, but you can see, you know, watching the games, they're they're close in most of these games. They're not getting blown out. So I think in another year or two, depending on who they add into the lineup based on free agents or through the drafts, um, we're going to see things starting to click and getting better. Nicholas Egan <laughs> says, I do really hope that this is our Eric Carlson trade, except this time we're the Senators. Viewed poorly <laughs> at first, but gets better with time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the idea. That's the hope. I don't know. I mean, I don't wish anything bad on New Jersey, obviously. I want it to be even trade, but yeah, you kind of hope that what's coming back is uh, not just promising, but kind of comes to fruition, right? I just, I don't think that'll happen, but can you imagine if the Sharks, if or the Devils, the Devils go to the Eastern Conference Finals this year? And so we, it becomes a first round in 24 and then that they just take a dive and that becomes a top 10 pick, which then gets pushed to 25, but they're even worse that year. So there's a top three pick. Like it would just be crazy. Go ahead. Uh, someone uh, was saying that they're just happy that uh, Eklund didn't get traded along with <laughs> well, whatever, yes. but Rick Roma, who we just had on, on screen there said uh, also as a devil's fan who follows the AHL, I will say I like, Okie doke. Um, the big hitter. Ahoy Chuck. Ahoy Chuck. Ahoy Chuck. Ahoy Chuck. Chuck. Not going to work here anymore. Hey, he's a big hitter who can fight and really skate. Old school D man. Hey, man, I like that. And you know what? Again, let's take a look at the DNA of the guys that Mike Greer is taking on. These are these guys that are very blue collar, right? Um, that you talked about with AC Martin, Sturm, uh, Cunning, who's been out, right? These types of players, these are the guys that he, they're going after. That This is the identity of the team that Greer wants. Um, not to say that Timo isn't that guy. I mean, he's, again, power forward, skates hard, bangs hard. He does everything, right? But, uh, you know, again, you, you're, you're talking about Mike Greer putting his fingerprints all over this team now. And guys like this are the types of players he's looking for. And if it's not this, the guy who's going to fill in on the NHL roster in years to come, they're at least going to be able to do it in the short term to make the team difficult to play against make the the locker room culture that uh, one that is uh hard working first right that's what we're going for we want you guys to go out there and give it your all every every night and the guys that are coming in they're going to go out there and bang going to go out there and in his case you know drop the gloves and fight if need be or whatever else those are the types of guys that they're looking for those hard workers those hard skaters that's why i love uh nico stern so much that's why i love uh, mario ferraro so much both of those guys have that engine and they just don't stop so uh, for him to bring in more of these types of players, and to be fair, uh, Mikey Asimont, he's really grown on me. And again, he's not a star-studded type of player, but he goes out there every night. He works hard, skates hard, bangs, doesn't let up. And that's the type of player that I'm enjoying watching. So they've done a great job putting a horrible product on the ice <laughs> that is still entertaining to watch for fans, uh, albeit maybe uh, the the attendance doesn't always show that, right? So Right. There you go. Well. I think it's too expensive for what you get personally, but jug six, six, six says, uh, Eklund dropped them a few nights, uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. I remember <laughs> Eklund dropping the gloves. Uh, I don't think that's what they thought they were getting with Eklund when they dropped no. him. But... No, you must've really pissed him off. If yeah. you dropped the gloves, right? Kid needs a cheeseburger, but he has art. <laughs> Way to go, jug. Oh, that might be common of the night. That was really good. Um, um okay. Anything what, else uh, in here? Was that, uh, I'm reading on the, on the athletic, um, yeah. Corey right Prom, you're reading. Well, Corey Prom, we have a show to do, Aaron. Gives, uh, he gives grades out for trades, <laughs> or they did okay. grades out. So one of them gave the Devils an A plus and the Sharks a C plus. Pronman gave the Devils a B plus and the Sharks a B. Yeah. Um, he said, Muka Madalin. I'm never going to be able to say it. Oh, you know, I kind of lie. It was, you know, a lot last, you know. Muka Madalin. It was one of the top prospect trade chips to me a few weeks ago in the 68th top ranked <laughs> under 23 in January. He would have been my preference as an NHL prospect between him and Holtz. What? I'm sorry. I'm useless to you right now. That was so funny. Go All ahead. right. Um, a Hoyt, a Hoyt Chuck, ugh. a Hoyt Chuck, a Hoyt Chuk is a solid defensive player. Um, he basically can see him as a third pairing defenseman eventually in the NHL as a who can kill penalties. So more depth that's yeah. going to be ready in a few seasons when the Sharks are going to be ready to be making a splash in the playoffs again. 
Um, Cheap so down. we're seeing we're seeing the players that like Harrington that went out, right? Um, it was it Harrington and Hitaka? Hitaka's maybe a little bit too young, but um, they're trading their aging players for younger ones that will basically be replacing them in a couple of years from now. No, Claxton, by the way, had uh, said this who neg- I think he meant whole negative feedback changes. If we win the lottery, then everyone forgives Greer and all is cool. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. A six foot four defenseman who's enormous hits hard and can skate. That's a little bit more rare than a top offensive forward, which we're going to be getting this draft. So he's going after someone that's a little bit more of a unicorn than than sure. Holtz would have been great and he's a top prospect, but um filling in the gaps where this upcoming draft does not have top defensemen. And now he's probably another season or two away from competing for a spot at the NHL level quicker than drafting somebody in the second or third round. That's a defensive prospect. It's going to take a lot more time. Um, so I don't, I understand what he's doing. He's he's to me, Greer seeing a much longer, you know, stretch of building process. And everyone else is like, let's get this over real quick. Let's get Holtz. Let's get those guys. Let's get them in here so the Sharks can make playoffs again soon and be competitive when I don't think that is the best way to do it. Do want to remind you guys, if you'd like to support the show, by the way, you can do that a couple of ways. You can uh, go to uh, the Super Chat function and anything you put in your, your comment there, we'll go ahead and read on the air uh, as long as it's family friendly. And then uh, also through Venmo at the Fin Factor um we'll have some eyes on that as well so if you guys put a comment there we'll go ahead and uh read that out as well so uh best way to support the show right there also you can go to thefinfactor.com check out the website we have hats shirts sweatshirts water bottles got it uh fanny packs and all kinds of other things so uh if you'd like to do that please go check us out there um i want to say let's see oh there was somebody here matt Lowe says trust the process fellas i'm trying matt i'm really trying (laughs) It's taking a while. Yeah. Anthony Thank Sanchez, you. hardworking players doesn't guarantee victories. That's the point, Anthony. We're trying to get Bedard. <laughs> so get the hardworking players that are fun and entertaining to watch, but we still lose. We've been doing it all season. It's been working. You Just can have more of them. You can only have so many Ferraris. You need some Jeeps on the team. And that's yeah. what kind of Greer is filling the team up yeah, with. I think we just traded our Ferrari, buddy. Right. For a bunch of Jeeps. Got to get that the Fin Factor bottle, especially if hot coffee can be put in it. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, can you get hot coffee in that thing? I think it's insulated. So, there you go. yeah. Don't quote me on that. You Don't quote yourself, me on that. But... Wonderful. Yes, yes, I can handle hot beverages, says Super Producer Jason. Thank you so much for that, bud. Uh, 24, 24 draft is supposed to be deep, so uh, deep too. So picks there is nice. Yes, we're looking at this draft, but certainly if, if the 2024 draft – uh, maybe not as deep, but if it is deep, then, um, you know, s- certainly nice to have a little extra draft capital there. Again, but for stuff like that, I wouldn't mind looking to Graham and seeing what Graham has to say. About yeah, Aaron, uh, you were about to make a comment far away. Uh, next next 2024 draft is more defensive um, high end prospects. This year is more offensive uh, skaters or forwards. So it's a little bit different. Um, so the Sharks, hopefully, man, if they can get a top five guy this year and a top. 10 guy next year that's looking good there's some building blocks right there columbus is getting points lately we have a chance at bedard says dark and donkey i feel weird saying that name honestly i don't know there's something weird about that one um but yeah yeah um looks like they're getting a little bit more uh and we've been sliding now we did pick up a point recently in an overtime loss uh this was at the patrick marlowe day which by the way is an official san jose holiday now did you know this no, February twenty fifth, awesome. officially Patrick Marlowe Day in San Jose. Cool. Does that mean so we get the day? Off? I've got it in my calendar. I've got it set to the yearly repeat. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like what's it called? Uh, Talk like a pirate day for me, you know. Just we'll, those we'll revisit it next year. Maybe we'll get Patty on next year for the. Oh yeah, that'll happen. Sure, first absolutely. year anniversary of Patty Marlowe Day. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get our future first line center in this draft. Says Noah Claxton. What do you think, Aaron? Sure, I yeah. mean. Anyone in the top five, I'm happy with. Top four or five, whatever. Yeah. I don't really... I'm not getting my hopes up for Bedard. I'm I'm assuming we're not going to win the, the lottery, so that way my hopes aren't destroyed, just like some of yours were with the trade today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know we did a roll call already, but I'd like to ask the chat for one more bit of information here. I want you guys to just kind of type away and fill this out. Um, who's next? 
Who's next? Are we trading anybody else? I think we should. But who do you think, chat, is next on the chopping block for the San Jose Sharks? Uh, big names that come to mind, Aaron, uh, obviously James Reimer. Uh, I think he's played extremely well this season. They've already made comment that they felt they, uh, I think it was uh, Quinn had made the comment that he felt Capo was the number one, uh, something to that effect at least. And I feel like you wouldn't explicitly say that unless you're trying to pump his tires and you knew <laughs> the other guy was on the way out or something. So I don't know. Uh, but uh, obviously Reimer comes to mind. I would love to see uh, LeBanc. Jug agrees with me on that one. Uh, Christopher Collins agrees with me on that one. Uh, Nick Ro Rick Roma, the guy from New Jersey, uh, he liked LeBanc, I bet. That'd be good. Uh, Dark and Donkey. I got a lot of people agree with me on LeBanc. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? Uh, Nick Bonino, Anthony Sanchez, Anthony, Anthony Sanchez says. That's a hard thing to say. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, Aaron. Is there anybody uh, in particular that you think is on the move here? <coughs> I think uh, Bonino, we're going to see more penalty killers. Um, yeah, everyone wants LeBanc gone. Everyone wants LeBanc That's gone. That's because of the contracts, man. If he had half that money, if he was a $2 million player, I don't think people would be as upset, but 4.7 is a hard pill to swallow. Um, I think Barabanov actually is going to go. I think he has some really good value for a top six or a player that can play in the top six if someone gets injured. Um, and there's been a lot of talk of his play in the last two weeks. I mean, most notably, Sidney Crosby quoted after the game saying that he really likes his game and thought that he was very uh, played very well and was slick moving. So I wouldn't be surprised if Barabanov gets moved. I mean, he's 28. We've seen his peak at this point. I don't think he's going to get any better for the Sharks. And um, he does have one more year at $2.5 million. But I, I really like his game. I always think that he looks very dangerous um, on the ice and, and makes the team better. But uh, yeah, there you go. Christopher Collins. No, Parabonov keep. I just, I don't think if there's interest from a team, I think they're going to trade him. So I, I would say Bonino, Parabonov. And if someone really wanted Nico Sturm, they're going to have to pay a high price because he's uh, pretty much a building block on that third line for the Sharks, I think. He's he's not worth it, but I wouldn't trade him for anything less than um, a late round first. I'm sorry. Right. I wouldn't. I, I To me, we don't need to deal him. Um, he's the type of guy that Greer wants and he's, uh, he, he's locked in with us for another season. So I'd rather keep him around. I'd rather see where we go next season. Um, and I think he's going to be a bigger part of the culture. And I also think that he likes the minutes he's getting. I Absolutely. think he likes how mm -hmm. much playing time he's getting here in San Jose, even on a losing team. And he's, you know, you see him in the post game interviews, he's saying all the right things that a leader would say, right? Um, I, I think he's got, I think he's got a bigger spot on this team than a lot of people are going to give him credit for. Um, yeah. Sturm is a pro NHL player. Absolutely. He's, he is a, he's just, he's a consummate pro, um, from on the ice, the things that he says, uh, to the media, at least, uh, the, his presence in the locker room, I'm sure, uh, all those things. He seems like the guy that is uh, going to be someone that you want in that locker room, especially on a losing team. So I don't know. I like him. Um, and and I, I would hate to see him go. I would not sell him for what he's worth. I would only sell him for uh, quite a bit more. That's, that's my feeling on it. Um, Noah Claxton saying EK 65 moved at the draft. I don't, I don't know that EK 65 gets moved at this point. I think it's too late. I think, uh, I think it depends a lot on the salary cap situation. If it's going up by 4 million or 1 million. Um, and that's if the escrow is paid off by the players this season. So if that goes up by four million, we're going to see a lot more movement of players. I think uh, if it doesn't, then I think it's going to be pretty stagnant. Um, so it depends. I could see uh, Couture being moved, maybe not this year, but maybe another year or two. Um, he is still a very, very good defensive minded. I mean, imagine on a very good team, he's your third line center. That guy's going to be scoring goals in the playoffs and uh, also defensively minded yeah. Just a very good two-way player. So um, he still has a lot left in the tank, even though he's 33. And he's bringing leadership to a team uh, going to the playoffs. So I think, um, again, I don't think that would be this year, but maybe in next season or, or possibly the one after. Um, but yeah, there you go. Sturm says what a captain needs to say. So why is Kutcher still in San Jose? <laughs> um, I don't think... I don't see Sturm as a captain only because he's just not getting enough minutes. You see more captains are more minute munchers than 
than a third line guy. So I don't, I like Sturm and I would love to have him as captain. I just don't see it happening. I would see him more of just wearing the A than the actual C. Uh, Jug says Cooch does everything and he hustles all the time. While I agree with you, that's also the reason why a lot of teams would pay a pretty hefty price for him. And he's not he's not going anywhere on this team. Let's put it that way. Um, this team, uh, I mean, obviously we traded Timo Meyer. We're, we're sellers. So, um, it, we're in a bit of a rebuild right now, whatever word they want to use that starts with R E we're in it right now. So, uh, for me, if I'm Couture, I'm going, yeah, I don't know that I want to stick around for that. Um, I, I would be happy to get moved, uh, somewhere else, anywhere else, um, and get an opportunity to, to pick up a cup. Now, I mean, remember this is a guy who played with, uh, Patrick Marlowe, Joe Thornton, Joe Pavelski, right? All these guys who are former captains, all these guys who uh, have had an opportunity to win a cup and they just kind of aged out. So, uh, I mean, Pavelski's still in the mix. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, you know, he doesn't want to fall into that same pattern. If he's 33 years old right now uh, and he's still uh, relevant in this league, probably be a good idea sooner than later to find himself on a team that is going to contend and the sharks just aren't it right now. So I would not be surprised to see him want to leave. And frankly, I would welcome him leaving, not because I hate the guy or anything, but because he deserves it. He deserves a shot. Right. And if it means that the sharks are better off for it in the future, again, it's entertainment, but it is a business. So, uh, <laughs> Kellen retool, rebuild, reset, reupholster, reboot. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Keller. I love that. So uh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't Cooch have a no movement or a three team. It doesn't matter if he says I want out um, just because I yeah. like a shot somewhere else. Not because I hate San Jose. Uh, he, and he doesn't. He loves it here. But Burns yeah. Burns is a perfect example. He had yeah. the same, same clause and it wasn't one of his teams that he had on there. So he had to be asked to waive it and he did. So, yeah, yeah I think uh, we could see Couture. Plus Couture is going to want to move if the Sharks aren't even close. Um, he's going to want to get a cup. So he's going to same boat as, as Burns. He's going to want to go. Yeah. I have to agree with you on that one. Any other names here, by the way, Aaron, that you, you saw, uh, you know, Barbanov. I don't really want to see Sturm go anywhere. I don't know. Was there, was there anybody else that uh, people were calling out that you thought, uh, yeah, that's a good one for them to move. Um, <laughs> other than the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, Reimer, Benino, pretty much everyone that we said, yeah, there's nothing. Anywhere. Wait, so wait a minute. Okay, so the bank makes sense because you, you get the four million off the books, right? That's great. Um, nobody wants Noah Gregor gone. Nobody wants Noah Gregor gone. No, I like him. Whatever. Vlasic, I don't think Vlasic's getting moved. See, I think everybody likes him. I, yeah, Vlasic is even harder. I think Vlasic's had a, a much better bounce back season this year. Maybe his value kind of takes up a little bit, but that seven million, unless the Sharks are eating some of that salary. And they've already been doing that for a couple guys now. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can if I can see it or maybe a three team trade where somebody eats the salary. I mean, if the Sharks keep accumulating all these draft picks, maybe that that helps. You know, they can throw one of these draft picks at another team for taking on yeah. uh, Vlasic. So I'm not saying it's never going to happen, but it'll be harder to do. Kellen thinks Couture and Reimer to Carolina that they have the cap space for it, but I don't know. That would oh, be okay. Be, what else you want to talk super about? Super interesting. <laughs> um, keep Gregor 950k and RFA. I think we can flourish in a larger role next season and beyond. Buddy, uh, Andy, I, I I love the optimism. I really do. The guy can't hit the net. He hits the post. He hits the glass. He hits the boards. He's, we just stunk. He just, I think just I think his game is going to evolve and change into a younger uh, uh, Matt Nieto. He's going to be a penalty killer with the speed, play a great defensive game, and maybe chip in some goals every now and then that you're not expecting because you never expect him to score. So um, I'm okay with that. I think if he wants to stay in the NHL, that's what he's going to have to do. See, now I love this, Josh. I love this. As a Devils fan... We went through this the past 10 years. I don't want, I don't love that. That I don't love. Uh, these are the kind of moves your team has to make to get better. It may not look like it now, but you guys did pretty well. Well, hey, Josh, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the uh, positive outlook. Uh, certainly, Sharks fans everywhere could uh, use a little bit more of that. 
SPJ on point. There you go. What did you say, SPJ? <laughs> did we just we just stunk? That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Andy man said Vlasic doesn't want to move with a full no move clause. He won't move anywhere unless he asks for it, which is public comments indicate he has no interest in moving. However, after this season, uh, it turns into a three team three team trade list. So same as Couture. He has to list three teams that he would be okay with a trade with and could be moved without his permission. So, um, that will be changing and there's a possibility. I mean, he's got after the season under three years at 7 million, man, you eat that for take half of it. I would take Vlasic for three and a half million top four. I think most people would, most teams would take Vlasic at three and a half million. And if you could find another trade partner, everybody would take him at 1.75. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's so. going to cost you some draft picks, but that's how much you'd want to get him off the books, or you just send him to Arizona, <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else does. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, okay, hey guys, this is an opportunity for you. We're we're almost approaching an hour here. Generally, where we about cut off. If there's any last second questions you have for for us uh, to answer, please feel free fire those away in the chat right now. And if it's something that we can uh, answer for you, or just a fun topic to talk about, we'll absolutely do that. Uh, that includes you, New Jersey's fans that are uh, popping in here. Uh, we do appreciate you guys stumbling into our little uh, teal background there. So uh, don't don't feel like you're uh, being left out. Please feel free like you're to chat like you're part of everybody else here because you are. So um, Aaron, let's see. It makes me sad seeing the tank at 50% capacity after years of, of success here in the Bay. Yeah, yeah but again, going back to what uh, that other uh, New Jersey fan had said, this is kind of what you have to go through, Josh. Uh, you know, you kind of have to go through this. Unfortunately for them, it took 10 years. I hope it doesn't take us 10. Uh, we're in what, year four of uh, not making playoffs right now? Yeah. We just stunk. Sharks. <laughs> the Sharks were very lucky in the early 2000s because they were the best team in the Bay Area. The Giants were terrible, hadn't won a World Series. Um, the A's are just the A's. And the Raiders are awful. The Niners are even awful. There's no the the Warriors were terrible. Like there was nobody to go see win other than the Sharks. The Sharks were almost a guarantee win at home. It's exciting. It's new for a lot of people that didn't really know hockey. Then the Giants win. You know, was it three and four years or something, or three and five years? And then the Niners get to the Super Bowl twice. And then the Raiders move. Cool. Um, the Warriors just absolute dynasty going to the finals like five of six years or something. So it just, it kind of changed things. Um, the Niners moved down closer. It's like they're in Santa Clara, which is practically San Jose. So people's money went elsewhere off the Sharks tickets and they had to buy these licensing agreements and stuff for the Niners. I think it's just all of that combined. And then the Warriors built a new arena now in San Francisco. Same thing. All that money that was coming down to the San Jose arena is now going to other places. So yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> uh, a couple things here. One, um, <laughs> Super Edition Jason's going back and forth with Noah here. Noah says, what's the largest Super Chat you guys have gotten? And he said is it, he thinks it was $99 uh, during the Sharks playoffs against Vegas. I would have answered, whatever you're about to do, Noah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Um, and people are, are uh, talking about the number of contracts uh, that the Sharks can um, to have retained salary on. Um, David saying that they can retain only, well, he says only two, but he, he oh. says later on only one more contract. But remember if the salary retention, you're talking about Timo that goes away after this season. So, uh, shortly after that, we'd be able to retain some talent, some salary now, maybe not, uh, for Vlasic or LeBanc and Carlson whatever, for this season, but I don't think you need to move all those guys, uh, this season anyway, spread it out a little bit more and you'll be just fine. So. Um, and frankly, I, I mean, LeBanc at four million. If a team really wanted him, I don't think four million is that difficult to squeeze in. So um, I, I don't know if that would be the case that they would need any sort of retention anyway. Again, it depends think? depends on what the cap's going up to. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, and you could also without salary retention just trade him to a third party team, and then they can retain that. Yeah, half but that costs million. that costs draft picks, and yeah, and you don't really want to give that up. So I'm just it, saying these are ways that it could happen. Ways. I'm not saying if it's going there are to ways. or not. Yeah. Um, I I don't think they should be forcing a trade and doing that though. However, I do think retaining salary is a much better option than a buyout. I hate buyout. Buyout just lasts so much longer. Yeah. 
Um, I'd rather retain salary than than that. So like Brent Burns is on the book for <laughs> another two seasons. That's fine. Two point seven. It'll be done. So by twenty twenty five, when some of these people are going to be up for, you know, extensions and whatnot, new salaries, then they'll have the actual money. Uh, Kellen, money. Kellen was asking how many contracts they can hold. So yeah, it is three. And he says, aren't they at four with Meyer Burns, Jones, and Balsers? Jones was a buyout, though. That's that's different. So uh, Balsers and Jones are both buyouts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so they have the, Burns and Meyer on the books for dead cap retained salary. Yeah, so that's a, it's a little different there. Yeah. Um, thank you for your question, though, Kellen. I do appreciate that. Let's see. There was oh uh, Christopher Collins, Joe Thornton jersey retirement next year. Aaron, uh, yeah, probably they're gonna need so? to fill at least one of those games, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> got to get people in the tank somehow. Let's just keep retiring jerseys. Hey, it was that that Marlo was uh, <laughs> the Marlo retirement was sold out. So that was the first time in a long yeah. time that the arena has been sold out. It was great, great to see here everything. Um, and by the way, I think the Sharks did an excellent super job of um doing that entire ceremony and honoring patrick marlowe i think uh they went above and beyond and and really made it something very special it wasn't something like a hack job i don't know if you've ever seen the washington now generals or whatever they're in the, the football team in washington um awful awful what they've done so i'm glad that they actually you know put some thought into it and flew out a bunch of people got in touch with a bunch of people had a bunch of players in town. They did the whole um, uh, Legends game the night before. You know, it's funny on TV, listening to some of the guys that were getting interviewed. They sounded a little like they partied a little too hard the night before after that Legends game. Yeah, they sounded like they were very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Their voices were shot. They could barely talk. They were super tired. Oh, here you go. There's the banner ceremony of oh, Marlo yeah. watching it go up. I feel like it. maybe we should do like a show just just for this. Yeah, I think we should. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. Well, that we show tomorrow. Yeah, we we're doing show tomorrow. And stuff. Yeah, that'd be fun. All wants the Sharks to retire Benning and Sumella's jersey. Yes. <laughs> Sumella. So, <laughs> I can even tell you what <laughs> For those of you was. new to this show, by the way, the reason he's saying that is because Matt Benning uh, signed. I'm sorry, not signed. Gave two uh, sticks, one to each of my kids on the same practice day. So he won my heart. Uh, and then uh, for Sumella, he signed uh, my son's uh, shirt and, and my son just was like, Oh, Auntie Sumella is the greatest. And he doesn't realize that he's no longer even in the NHL. So, uh, but he still like really likes Sumella for that reason. So yes, uh, retire both their jerseys, uh, bring, bring a handful of fans. into the, into the team. You, know, you know, it's funny a long time ago when yeah. I lived with Marshall and we had season tickets, he absolutely hated Marcel Gotch for some reason. You remember Marcel Gotch? That's random, yeah. Yeah, he just hated him. He thought he was the worst. He never put in effort. He was the worst player ever. I bought him a Marcel Gotch jersey for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the only Marcel Gotch jersey ever made for a fan. <laughs> and I bought it and I gave it to him for his birthday. We just stunk. Kellen says the banner was awesome, but Jumbo in tears broke me. Guys, in the chat, please. Let me know because uh, I, I'm, I'm curious if uh, everybody else had the feels on that one, too. If you don't, you have a stone heart and shame on you. <laughs> um, I, my goodness, Aaron. I mean, well, yeah, what a ceremony. Um, so awesome to hear the hockey roots for uh, Patrick Marlowe. I laughed so hard when they were talking about, you know, um, there weren't any street signs. So you had to tell them, oh, yeah, there's a big tree you have to turn right at and everything to get to their house. Um, that was just really, really funny stuff. And, um, yeah, there you go. There, there's, there's Jumbo and, and Patty having a good laugh there. Um, so, you know, for them to get drafted one, two and get the opportunity to play with each other for as long as they did and just be as, as good of friends, uh, as they, they became not just on the ice, but obviously off. And then, uh, they, they had mentioned, uh, that there was a time where they had the hotel rooms where they, they roomed together and then they got to a point in their careers where they were allowed to be in separate rooms, but they decided not to still because they were just <laughs> having too much fun. Um, I, just what a special bond between those two. And uh, absolutely, yeah, seeing seeing uh, Jumbo in tears uh, was my toilet just blew up, says Jake Burns. I'm hoping that's kind of like an analogy for uh, waterworks is what you meant. I think we could have said that a little differently, uh, Mr. Burns. Uh, probably no relation. But um, yeah, th thank you for that. I, I think 
Um, Zinxie says Jumbo. Chris Collins, Jumbo is my all-time favorite. Got a feel for the guy. Should have had a cup. I know it. It, it sucks, honestly, for for Patty too. And um, but you know, again, we go back and we talk about Couture, and he. It, I hope that he's smart enough to uh, know to go somewhere other than San Jose uh, so that uh, he has the opportunity that I'd hate to see yet another really solid San Jose Shark player just kind of go home empty handed at the end of their career. Yeah, it's just sad. We're, we're, we're the cursed it's, team it's, right now. What? We'll never win. We're the cursed team. Can't win. Oh, uh, man. If they only won the cup in 2016, things would be so different right now. So different. Ronaldo says, guys, this is like watching a White House press conference. Is it that entertaining? Is no. that much fun? I think he's being sarcastic. You're welcome, <laughs> Ronaldo. Cool. Anyway, uh, coming up, moving on. San Jose Sharks are having their Pride Night coming up. I think we have a graphic for this. Uh, Silicon Valley Pride event. It is on Saturday, March 18th at 730 you can get uh, a hat if you, I think you have to go through this link here and I will put the link down in the description for you so you can click on it easily. Uh, you're going to get a pride hat and you also get to go on the ice. And in fact, that picture is so tiny. You can't see it, but we are on the ice for that picture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. That wasn't a joke. We're really on the your magnifying glasses. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get to go on the ice after the game. It's pretty cool. They lead you out there and uh, try not to slip and, go around the circle and they take a giant picture of someone standing out in the stands and says one two three and then you try and look and go oh yeah you can see my face somewhere in there anyway um you're selling it tickets, really well right now by the way i what you're selling it really well right now by the oh, way oh it's fine a portion <laughs> of the tickets are going to go to the volunteer run nonprofit organization silicon valley pride you can buy tickets today that is open the upper level are 54 dollars and the lower level is 97 dollars um, and that also gets you into a pregame reception where I believe they had some some light snacks and drinks. Um, I think a, a hosted bar. So, uh, yeah, you can follow Silicon Valley Pride on Instagram. It's at SV Pride. One word. Uh, Christopher Collins says people get mad about this sort of thing. That's OK, man. We're all inclusive here. So no worries. Uh, and then Ronaldo giving us the little I don't know if that's a high five or a prayer emoji. I have no idea which one that is. But then the heart and the thumbs up. Hey, man, we love you right back. I think that's what you're saying, at least. So there you go. Um, Aaron, there was one thing that happened in the game that I just I have to bring up. Uh, I know we're not really talking about the games. Uh, but it's just something happened. And uh, Eric Carlson, of course, we've been watching him this whole season and we've been tracking you know, points and whatnot. And we have a special thing. For those of you who are new to the show, we have some New Jersey <laughs> fans here. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, uh, we've got a bit of a graphic uh, that we like to put up uh, regarding when Eric Carlson uh, scores points. So Super Producer Jason, please take it away. button down the hatches uh, so he says something different every time so that was yeah fine. we don't like, know we don't know we what don't it know is, what he's, yeah because super just jason is just doing this all in the background we have no clue what's going on so uh grand's is asking for a mike ratsy retirement jersey party oh god that's no. not happening oh and hoffman too yeah mike hoffman <laughs> uh someone i think it was uh anthony had asked about owen nolan i don't think owen nolan gets his jersey retired i don't think he was here long enough i love my oh no he's probably yeah. Probably my one of my first favorite players uh, watching them a long time ago. But um, I don't think he would get his jersey retired. I think it'll just be Jumbo and Patty, at least for now, yeah. until who knows? Maybe the Sharks win a cup with Couture lifting it and he gets his number retired at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, here, here's here's why I don't think Owen Nolan gets his jersey retired it's because it hasn't happened yet. He's been gone for long enough now. If it hasn't happened yet, it ain't happening. So that's kind of my take on it. However, I could see if uh, Eric Carlson sticks around long enough and if we win a couple of cups and he's still a part of the team, uh, maybe he gets his jersey retired. But really, the only reason I'm saying that is because we have to close out that segment, Aaron. So I'm going to have him play there uh, one more time and it'll be something a little different. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's uh <laughs> that's appropriate uh for, for this season, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Couture should be abandoning ship right now. Are you kidding me? No, uh, yes, kidding. Jug. I said win a couple cups. Again, I was just trying to segue to, <laughs> to the thing. Didn't you hear me? Come on now. Number 19. Uh, yeah, such a popular number too. I know. Yeah, if, if they retire uh, 19, that's that's a pretty big number. A lot of number 19s in this league that have been really, really ridiculously good. So DBY. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. Zach, I, comes you know what's cool? Too. It's I, I think it's awesome that um, Joe Thornton is back in the Bay Area because I was worried yeah. when he sold his house that he wasn't going to come back. Um, and then he went to play for Florida. So I was shocked that he was back, but I didn't realize he had a second home in San Jose. So that makes sense. <laughs> he sold one of them. Yeah. So, uh, so it's it's cool when you see him. I mean, we go to Barracuda games a lot and we see him there. Like he's at at the Barracuda watching them. Um, along with, uh, who do we see a lot? We see a lot of the guys that were in the Legends game. Hannon. I, I Smith, yeah. I was going to uh, say, I, I see Hannon quite a bit actually. And I saw yeah. Jumbo, uh, uh, earlier today um, at the rink for the solar for America, the kids playing 10 and whatnot. And um, so Hannon's team actually played our team today. So that was, uh, I, I saw him again. Just, How'd you guys do? We did. Okay. Uh, I mean, Cougars picked up their second loss of the season, unfortunately, but they're currently in first place. Again, this is 10 U a um, NorCal hockey. So um, nice. yeah, but we'll, nice. we'll play them again next week, so we'll have another shot at them. But yeah, that that Hannon team is no joke. They're very, very well coached, clearly. Uh, so there you go. But yeah, that Jumbo uh, uh, is uh, with the um, the younger group uh, of ten U kids. So there you go. Yes, Jumbo was an absolute rink rat. Uh, I I was told he came to the rink um, on off days just to shower. <laughs> Could have showered in one of his two houses. Decided to come to the rink. Take a shot. Oh, man. That's just... We just stunk. He probably <laughs> he, <laughs> he didn't have the shower. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, seriously. New Jersey has no real great podcast like San Jose. Much love and learned much tonight. Oh, hey, Ronaldo. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I feel like we almost got off on the wrong foot there, Ronaldo, but I think we're, we're buddies <laughs> now. Thank you so much. That's surprising. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of Devils fans, but I guess not enough that know how to use technology. So maybe that's it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that is the case. I don't know. Uh, it's the beard. It's intimidating. Man, I, I, I'm I, tired of Jumbo's beard. I want him to shave it. I think it's gross. I want him to keep it a little more tidy, I think. I think it needs to. I mean, obviously, I have a beard, too, but I like to keep it kind of trim. Not like Maybe you do, know, where it's That's just stubble. disgusting. That's stubble. <laughs> you have stubble? Yeah, you shaved you. this morning, right? Yeah, me. I shaved this morning. Yeah, it grows back really fast. Anyway, Paul's always been like this. I think even through high school and before high school, I had a beard in sixth grade. <laughs> he would he would think about a razor, or he would he would shave and then think about his beard, and it would be back like in mm -hmm. ten seconds. <laughs> we get in trouble. Uh, you get you get in trouble for shaving in the morning and still having a beard at school, didn't you? I don't. You I don't a, remember. It's too long ago now. <laughs> well, I thought you got a jug in high school for not shaving. Jug was, was that? Remember? To tell him jug was justice under God. Basically, detention. We went to a Jesuit high school yeah. and they would get on with it. Justin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Getting off topic. <laughs> anyway, I just like making fun of your face. That's all. All right. Oh, Graham Slam says he's 23 and he barely has to shave. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, okay. I mean, any anything else uh, to, to talk about right here? Uh, guys, again, in the chat, if you, there's something you want to chat about, we got a lot of folks still hanging around. So uh, if you guys want to bring up a certain topic and we can kind of uh, spitball about it, Aaron, if you see any comments, uh, anything to, to chat about? No, I mean, I'm looking. Let's look at the week ahead. We got a game yeah. on Tuesday against the Canadians, who are also not doing so well. Yeah. Um, and then the Blues, who are starting to sell off some pieces. And that was another team that was in the running to get Timo. Um, and then Saturday, we're playing Washington. So we're hosting all three games this week. We're back at home. So it'll be interesting to see what these new guys can do. I'm sure they will. some will become some fan favorites right away. I'm sure there will be a giant hit or maybe even a goal. But uh, here you go. Um, uh, Kellen just asked, could you talk about the Keandre Miller penalty and what comes next for him? Pretty low move there. I don't know if you saw what happened, Paul, but... I I did. I saw what happened, and that's really all the information that I have. I don't know if something happened um, to kind of 
get him to the point where he wanted to do that. I don't have all the information. I just saw the end result. And I think regardless of how it got to that point, you, you don't do that. Um, basically what happened, and for those of you who don't know, is uh, Keandre Miller uh, spat at uh, another player. And um, it's just gross. <laughs> like It's just gross. I laugh just because uh, it, it's it's awkward, quite <laughs> frankly. But uh, yeah, definitely not something that I would expect a professional athlete to do is a spit in the face of another athlete. So, yeah, it's pretty gross. Um, he apologized to him after the game. And we are very familiar with Drew Doughty being on the West Coast and seeing him a lot. So I can understand why someone would want to spit in his face. <laughs> but still, <laughs> still, I would never do it. And I don't I don't think it was a good idea, obviously. So um, I think that's going to be something new for the um What's it? The discipline committee, the the whatever to he's going to have a suspension or something. So it'll be interesting to see what they crack down for spitting. Um, we have seen Brad Marchand lick people. So it's kind of maybe similar. <laughs> that They can base it, that off of honestly, like it's equal. It's still your saliva touching another person's face. Right. Yeah. I and mean, the act of spitting is worse to me than the act of licking. But like it, your your tongue is on the guy. And you're still getting the spit there. That's weird, man. I don't know. That the whole thing is just mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, my fantasy team. I had Brad Marchand on my team last year, and my team's name is Marchand's Tongue. And it's just a picture of him licking the guy. Good lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andy Mann says, outside of the top five, and this is a great uh, opportunity to point to Graham Slam here, actually. Outside of the top five picks, because they're pretty obvious, what positions slash players should the Sharks be targeting with their draft capital to help with organizational growth long term? I would highly advise you flip through our video stream here um, on YouTube and just find the one where we're talking to Graham Slam. He's the guy that, that said right below you, he spit on Drew Doughty. Uh, we talked with him. He's uh, as close to an expert on prospects as you're going to get. Um, so we, we talked with him. He went through a, a good number of players that are coming up in the draft, guys that the Sharks should be targeting. I'm sure some of that maybe has changed now that we've got uh, this trade in place. We picked up a couple guys that maybe fill some other roles, other needs, uh, at least later on than the, the, that top five pick, right? Um, but there's still a lot of very good information there. I would absolutely recommend – uh, when you get done with this to go flip through, uh, like I said, our video stream there and just uh, find that one there. Also, if if you guys haven't had a chance yet, and we got a lot of people still here. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please, please check out episode, this is 173, check out 172. And I say that because we did a spotlight episode. This is a, uh, it's a training facility, essentially, uh, here in San Jose. And it's, we just had so much fun going through uh, all of the different hockey uh, things I said, but there's like a, a mini rink. There's the, um, the, the treadmill, the shooting pads, the slide boards. We had a couple uh, guests, uh, former sharks on the show with us, uh, helping us out and showing us how to not look stupid. And for those of you who don't know, Aaron here uh, doesn't skate or, or play hockey. He he plays soccer. So getting him out there for the first time, um, really a fun watch. I've watched it several times over. Aaron, thank you so much for the entertainment value. I, I do appreciate that. And for those of you who maybe haven't seen it, even the folks who are New Jersey Devils fans uh, popping in the chat here, definitely still worth the watch. Um, I, watch this guy. Uh, he, he kills it. He does a great job. Um, and then last thing here, um, that Graham Slam episode that we talked about, uh, Super Producer Jason just put it in there. It's episode number 168. Thank you, Super Producer Jason. So 168, if you're looking for the draft prospects and all that talk, and 172, I'm telling you, it is a hilarious watch. It's a lot of fun, uh, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed as much as I have over and over again, Aaron. <laughs> Kellen, Kellen just said after Friday, I think it would be cool to see you guys do a show with Graham about the picks the Sharks have and a 10 man projected list about who those picks could be. Maybe I'll reach out to you, Graham, see if you're interested. Uh, maybe we could do that next week once the uh, after this Friday, basically, because that's when the trade deadline is. And that's where all the chips fall for the most part. There will be some other trades, you know, leading up to the draft, but um, at least we'll know where the Sharks are. We just stunk. <laughs> that's that's where we are. <laughs> right now there's 11 picks in this upcoming draft for the sharks possibly more coming uh kellen says a proud listener seeing aaron out there as a first timer getting down <laughs> absolutely 
I did not fall. I was, was proud my, of you. My claim to fame, I did not fall. I was <laughs> I was very sore afterwards, but I did not fall. I thought for sure you, you'd take a tumble on the mini rink, and I thought for sure you'd be hanging from that treadmill, or the 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 harness yeah. on the treadmill. I thought for sure it was gonna be the, the treadmill that was gonna get me. I, I was so disappointed when you weren't, but oh well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, Super producer Jason got pneumonia to bring you the off ice training video. Yes, uh, that is actually why the video came out a little bit later than we thought it was going to. Um, but Super producer Jason is an absolute uh, master at his craft, was able to finish editing and everything else. Uh, if, if you can, guys, can you just show uh, Super producer Jason a little bit of love in the chat here? The guy works ridiculously hard. Uh, we're just the faces. We pretend like we know what we're talking about, but he makes us look good. Uh, all the, the the graphics and the backgrounds and the get on with it, all that stuff. Uh, it, that's all him. So uh, if you can kind of give him some uh, some fire, some thumbs up, some claps, whatever, just give him a little bit of love. Uh, we certainly would appreciate that. Uh, I could have more info on oh, so more info on more guys if there's... we did it closer to the draft. Yes. Oh, there's Super Producer Jason uh, yeah. with pneumonia. Yeah. For those of you on the podcast, you're missing out on quite the picture here. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think closer to the draft would make more sense, uh, Graham. I think you're right. So maybe we'll do uh, we'll set that up and get that figured out. I'd love to see if uh, some of the picks that you have in mind are the ones that the Sharks actually do take. That would be interesting. Excellent. Uh, Anthony Sanchez says they have a total of 15 picks this draft if things work out. I guess there's some conditions maybe Ooh. that they did get more. Oh, maybe. I didn't think uh, that 15... Because some of those picks that they got were for next next year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I counted them right. It says eleven. Whatever. Whatever. Well, Sanchez says you're wrong. So there you go. Okay. All right, um, Aaron. Unless there's anything else, I think we're uh, good to go here, right? Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you for joining. It was a great absolutely. Day that was a lot of fun. Hey guys, again, mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, appreciate all the comments. We had quite a few uh, people in the chat today. I had a hard time keeping up. I was kind of scrolling backwards because they kept flying by. So, um, it, oh wait a minute, we have sixty three viewers uh, at the yeah yeah. So there's there's quite a few of you still here. Hey man, I, again, I appreciate the longevity. I appreciate you guys sticking around, chatting with us, making this fun. Uh, this for me is, is the best part when I get to look back and see. Uh, you know, all the comments and we're just going back and forth and chatting. Uh, that's what this show is intended to do. It's supposed to be a conversation between us sharks fans and the, the, the poor unfortunate souls from New Jersey uh, and, and other places that come in and have to stare at our mean mugs. So there you go. Uh, again, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do that several different ways. One is with the super chat function too, uh, at the, the fin factor on Venmo. Uh, certainly a good way to do that monetarily as well as going to the fin getting any of those pieces of merchandise that does help support the show. And, um, you know, it gets you something back in return uh, for your uh, monetary investment, shall we say. So, um, again, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Aaron's holding up the water bottle. See, I got it this time. I said water bottle. I don't know why I struggle with that one so much all the time. But, oh, and there's the sticker on the toaster. If you don't know, our stickers work very well on toasters. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm it's not sure long, why that's even a thing, but it is long-term inside joke from long-term from like season listeners. one. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the blue scream or whatever. Uh, Kellen Foster <laughs> saying SPJ, you are awesome, man. The audio quality for, from the echoing facility was fantastic. Yes. So producer Jason, um, <laughs> to put a ton of work yes. into the audio again, uh, we, we just talk, he makes everything look great. So, uh, and sound great. So, uh, again, thank you so much for all of that. Uh, get some likes on this video if y'all are still here lurking in the chat. Kellen, thank you so much <laughs> for farming for the likes for us, buddy. I do appreciate it. I kind of hate and, asking for that stuff. I don't yeah, like also asking. subscribe. Please, please the like button. If please, you're new please. here, subscribe. We're here once a week, so we do a little rundown of the Sharks Week and talk yeah. about some other stuff, obviously, like toasters. So have fun. <laughs> yeah, I hate asking for that stuff, but you know you kind of have to. So whatever yeah. it is, what it is. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. Aaron, any last? Little, little tidbits nope let's no. do it okay hey um before i sign off i am gonna say somebody say go devils go you know, whatever they say go devils go um yeah absolutely i'll be rooting for timo 100 
Uh, I hope that go, things go well for him in New Jersey. Again, uh, we don't like to see uh, anybody leave and then do poorly. We'd like them to do well. So if you're a New Jersey fan watching this, uh, we're rooting for you guys. We hope everything turns out well. Uh, we just hope that the draft picks you gave us uh, turn out better in the long run. So uh, <laughs> no hard feelings. For Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys maybe tomorrow, but probably next week. <laughs> probably next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.